Good morning. Welcome to the online service of the Swiss Home Park Primitive Methodist Church. We pray that you are blessed by what you hear this morning. I'll be reading from John chapter 20, verses 1 through 10. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have taken him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stopping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen cloths lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. Appreciate you reading, Nancy, and I know you've been all just very patient and good and I just want to share a couple of quick thoughts with you as we come to this part of, of, of Easter Sunday here. You see on, on the screen, um, Scott uh, provided this since it was overcast today and you couldn't see a sunrise. And um, so that was a sunrise along the coastal line down in Carolina, somewhere if I'm not mistaken. So uh, thank you, Scott, for reminding us of, of these wonderful things. And this morning, let's just pray for a moment. Lord, help us as your words before us. We pray for the church. We pray that each of us would be, Lord, all that you've called us to be and uh, go forth with great expectancy in our heart because of your promise. And we thank you for this as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, today is Easter Sunday. Uh, did, you, did you catch uh, any clue of that? Okay. Well, it is, and praise the Lord, because what is Easter all about? It's the fact that He's risen. Christ has risen. He's risen indeed. And, and why do you seek though, the living among who? The dead. Isn't that, uh, isn't that a pretty sad thing? Because it, so many times we forget all the things that we've been told. Uh, he, he's risen just as he said. And why are we surprised sometimes when we hear and, and things that we think, wow, that's so fresh and new. No, we, we've heard it many, many times. And hey, he's not here. He's risen, just as he said. And, and Nancy read for us today in this passage of, of scripture, and, and we find that things were, were just going, going sour real fast. And, and we get to the place in this passage when there was no really expectancy of, of life. And when you get to the portion of the scripture when you see the question was asked really what's what's happening here and, and they said woman in verse 13 they asked this simple question why are you weeping why would you weep on the resurrection day well maybe tears of joy but was she weeping tears of joy she said because they have taken away my lord I don't know where they've laid him. You see, this started in the first part of the 20th chapter. Now we're down to the midsection of the chapter, and, 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 and Mary Magdalene's going to see Jesus, but it's not in a spirit of expectation of someone who's alive. You've got to remember something. It wasn't that he rose. The whole concept in her mind and countless others was what? They took him. Today in uh, the Sunday school class, we went and combined and we're watching this video called Resurrection. And it's a pretty cool concept on the Roman 
uh, guard and this whole thing of the cover-up and the fact that he knew what he saw, but everybody around him was just taking the payoff for this whole thing. And the reality was simply, again, here, they, they, they took him, and, and I just don't know what's happening. Now, I want to share with you a particular passage in Scripture. There's a, a, an area in Matthew chapter 22. Uh, there's, well, there's always problems. And the Sadducees, simply in the 23rd chapter, in the 20, 23rd verse of the 22nd chapter of Matthew, said this. Hey, there's no resurrection. There's no resurrection. And you know what Jesus said? And this is what we want to look at just real quick this morning for a couple moments. In verse 29 of Matthew 22, Jesus said, look, you're mistaken. And then he goes on to say this, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. Look what happens in our life when we fail to know the scripture. And when we fail not to know the scripture, what happens? We fail not to know the power of God. Because what were they missing that day? They couldn't understand and realize the power of God because they really didn't know what was happening. And this is where Jesus brings light to so many things. In our day today, how many things are we missing when it comes to understanding and realizing the power of God? First of all, because we don't know what? The scripture. Think about that. We don't know and understand truly what the scriptures are all about. Real quick question. What is the Bible? What's the story of the Bible? If you just had to summarize it in a few sentences, what would you say? God's what? God's love letter? Yeah. What else? All right, I'm going to give you something. Ready? Let's read this together. Here's a quick synopsis of the scriptures. God created man and placed him in a perfect environment. However, man rebelled against God and fell from what God intended him to be. God placed the whole world under a curse because of sin, but immediately set in motion a plan to restore humanity and all creation to its original glory. Friends, that's the scriptures. From the very beginning, here we have this perfection. Here we have man's choice to what? Not take hold of it, fall into sin. And subsequent to that, what do we see? We see God's plan to restore humanity and all creation back to its original glory. And you see that from Genesis all the way to Revelation. That's the scripture. Think about that. And so how many times in the midst of our journey in life do we fail to miss what God has in store for us because we just don't know, first of all, the total plan. And it's hard to fit pieces sometimes in life when we simply just don't know. And here on this resurrection morning, people were being just, they were, being, they were just so clueless to God's plan and what this meant to restore humanity in this redemptive act. And they're standing there ready to anoint a dead body instead of to receive a living Savior. And so when Jesus told the Sadducees, look, you got it all wrong because not only don't you know the scriptures, but you don't know as well the power of God. And when you put those things together, how many times are we standing outside someplace brokenhearted and in despair and we think that God has left us and abandoned us only because we can't experience his power because we don't know the plan. We don't know his word. So here's just a simple question for you today. You don't answer this out loud, but how well do you know the word of God? It's a real simple question because here on Resurrection Day as we read in the scriptures, people didn't know. They were with Jesus. I mean, they'd been going to Sunday school and church for like 600 years. What would that equate to if you spent three years with Jesus day in and day out? How many Sunday school classes? Maybe 600 years. I don't know. I mean, 365 times three, okay, I mean, you're getting up there, and if you times that times 24 times, holy cow. Man, Janice, you'd be buying pins forever, okay, as far as attendance pins, okay? But at this point in life, they still didn't know. What about you? What about me? What about all the time that we have spent? How well do we know the word? Because friends, our knowledge of the word will lead us to have a greater understanding of his power in your life and in mine. Here's a passage of scripture from Ephesians chapter 1 verses 18 through 20. This was the desire of the apostle Paul for the church in Ephesus. 
This is the second part. The first part when Jesus told the Sadducees, look, you got it all wrong about the resurrection because A, you don't know the scriptures, B, nor the power of God. Here's Paul's prayer for the church in Ephesus. Let's read this together. I pray that you may know his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Paul's prayer, Paul's desire for the church was for them to know his great power toward you and through you, not that you are the source of that, but you're the recipient that feeds and is energized, empowered in everything that he's called you to do as you look in life to know that this is not the end, this is not final, because God's plan, God's power is being fulfilled in my life. How do I know that? Because, hey, I know the word. The Sadducee says no resurrection. Jesus says you don't know the word. If you knew the word, you'd know the power that's going to bring about the concept of resurrection. See, resurrection's a hard thing. You mean someone's going to die, and after three days they're going to be brought back to life? That just can't happen. But you see, when we understand and know truly what the word of God is for us, friends, it's a whole different animal. And today, I want each of us to simply ask the question in response to Jesus' reply to the Sadducees, how well do I know the word? And because of that knowledge or lack of knowledge, what am I missing out in my life each day when it comes to the things of God? I'm never going to experience what that power of God is for my life unless I understand fully what his word is and how it leads and guides me each day. How many times is God asking you to be part of something? How many times is God prompting you? How many times are these things occurring in our life? But we don't understand what his voice is. We don't have that discernment in our heart. Why? Because there's a void in the word knowledge department in our lives. The prayer is that for us to know what? That great power, that power that brought Christ again from the grave to be indwelling in us. Wow. Do you understand what that is today? What are you facing today that just just knocks the wind out of you, just takes you and gives you a shot in the gut, claps you at the knees, causes you to just be overwhelmed and just, just taken out because you don't have anything left? What are you looking at today to say, that stone will never be moved in my life. That's just an impossibility that will never happen. Friends, the word of God gives us insight, gives us understanding so that we can see and trust his hand and power at work in our lives. Because I don't know about you, but I certainly don't have what it takes to do the things that God wants me to do. I don't. And for someone that says, hey, I have it all together, well, guess what, then? I, they, 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 they must be... Uh, looking somewhere else because that's not what the scriptures tell us. The scriptures tell us that we can be complete in him and find what we need to be more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. Watch what happens here when we track the power concept. You ready? Here's what Paul's prayer was. And you can go back and read in Ephesians in the previous verses that lead up to 18, 19, and 20. But here was his prayer. Watch what happens here. As he was praying for the Ephesians to see God's power, you ready? Was evident how? In their salvation. I want you to think about it for a moment. Remember the day in your life when you gave your heart to Jesus. That was a special time. What did you feel and know and understand at that point? There was something here that I've never experienced in my life before. Paul wanted them to know that was the power of God right there. Now, what's happening next in your life? The power was evident, and now it is evident in what I do every day. Think about it, that power that I understood when I came to Christ. But now each day, that power that I understand every day, notice it was and now it still is, and then what's the promise as well for resurrection? It will be. You see the point here. The Sadducees are saying, there's no resurrection. There's no dead bodies coming out. None of that's going to happen, friends. That power that was, that is, and will be is the prayer that Paul had for the church. And friends, guess what happens in your life and my life when we see and hear and know what his word is. And then it gives us that understanding of what his power is in our lives each day. Do you ever say, I don't want to go to work 
you ever say, I don't want to go to school? Did you ever say, I don't want to see that person anymore? Did you ever say, you know, dentist just drives me crazy? You know, you know, whatever it is, I mean, and the things that we just throw up and say, no more. Instead of saying, God, you brought me here and you've placed me here, and I'm just lifting my heart and hands to you right now and asking you to give me what is needed so that your power, your presence, and your purpose would be seen clearly in my lives. You see, that's why the Sadducees looked at the resurrection and thought, this will never happen. And Jesus says, because your lack of knowledge of the word and your lack of that understanding causes you to do what? Miss his power in your life. So this morning, we're just going to simply say this. How confident are you, you ready, in God's ability and power, you ready, to fulfill his promises of, you ready, redemption, resurrection, and ultimately glorification. You see, that concept of glorification is when that final act, this body will be taken and changed, and sin will be gone. You really believe all that? This is what Jesus challenged the Sadducees with. This was the prayer that Paul had for the church in Ephesus. And this was the struggle that was going on that day of the tomb, of the resurrection, because of our lack of knowledge. Think about that lack of understanding causes us to miss and under, misunderstand how God's power was, is, and will be now and forever to those who trust him. Where would you be in all sincerity as you read the resurrection story? What character best identifies you? Would you be going to anoint a dead body? Would you be one of the disciples saying, yeah, it's there, it's real? Or maybe later on in the day after it all connects, you're like, no, it was. And we got to go back. He's risen in Luke. We find he's risen indeed. We didn't get it initially, but yeah, it's there, it's real. Where do you see yourself? Think of some of the just hours of frustration and fear and uncertainty that we've spent in our lives simply because we don't know his word. Because of that lack of understanding, to understand his power and his presence and his purpose in my life. It's been a challenge. So this morning, I want to encourage you to look at the scripture, to hold that book in front of you, that book of books, and say, God, you've given me everything I need participate in the divine nature as Peter writes and as well to escape the corruption of the world right here and your word it's inerrant, it's infallible and because of that and your desire for us to know what it means it became flesh and it dwelt among us and to those who received it he gave what? the right power to become the sons of God. So this morning, I pray you leave here encouraged. I pray you leave here blessed. I pray you leave here challenged. And to say, Lord, I, I, I just need to dig deeper into this. And as I dig deeper and have a greater understanding of what it means, cause me each day to know that it's him working in me and through me. All for his honor and for his glory. Amen. 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 We're going to sing a song in a moment, and it's simply this. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. And what's the course? He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me, and he talks with me. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Is he in your heart today? Is his word just the basis of everything you do and say? Is that power leading and guiding you? I pray as we sing, it'll be a time of encouragement and blessing and cause you to understand what it means to have his word and power alive in your life. Father, we love you and praise you for Jesus. This morning, Father, as we sing this song in closing, may it be a time of just remembrance, Lord, a, 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 a reminder of, of how much we, we need your word in our lives.
And Lord, because of your word having first place in our life, Lord, you cause us to rely more and more upon the power of your presence, Lord, to see you exalted and honored in everything we do and say. Maybe today someone's here that, that doesn't know Jesus is Savior. Today would be that day by faith to say, Jesus, come into my heart. Remove that, that, that darkness, take that sin away. May I know what it means to be a child of God. I want to understand that power and your presence in a way, Father, that I never had before. Father, we rejoice and we give you honor and praise as we pray this together for your honor and glory, asking it in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for watching us this morning. If you'd like to get in touch with us, please go to www.swisshomeparkpmchurch.com. We pray God's blessings upon you as the week goes by.